Hi, this is Shaylin from Misophonia International, and I just wanted to make a quick video today to mention misophonia and behavior therapy, as well as exposure therapy. And I really want to talk about this even briefly, because I want to point out that there's actually no evidence that these treatments work. Furthermore, the evidence of misophonia is pointing to the fact that misophonia is a neurophysiological disorder. So when a behavioral analyst or even a therapist trained in CBT tries to give you these therapies based on behavior, which cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, still talks about behavior. So basically, these clinicians are taking something that has not been researched enough that is pointing to a brain disorder that is physiological, so actually in the structure of the brain, and they are deciding that they are going to charge people and treat them. And I'm sure that, you know, they're getting insurance payments and it's hard in certain countries to get insurance, blah, blah, blah. But that aside, don't you think that you should have scientific evidence on a treatment before you use it on a new disorder and essentially treat these poor people as guinea pigs while some of them are being charged out of pocket for these treatments that don't work. And even if they see, you know, maybe a little bit of a response that's positive in the beginning, but over time, these therapists, these clinicians, they are actually looking back and saying, hey, I know you said that this worked at the time for like five minutes or 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 10 days, a couple months, whatever, but did it work long term? And for the most part, all of the results I've seen all of the anecdotal results from web polls that we've run have all said, you know, it didn't work long term. A lot of them said it was expensive. They went through personal debt. They they didn't have insurance for it. And all I'm doing, I'm sitting here and I'm fuming. And I'm fuming because to me, a clinician, their number one thing that they need to do is use evidence-based practice, period. That's a fact. I mean, it should be a fact. It should be a fact that they should use science. And science should, of course, develop treatments over time. There's none yet. That's hard for people. I get that. But in the meantime, that doesn't mean that we should just be throwing whatever to the wall and seeing what sticks. Because what we do know is those who have gone through exposure therapy experience extreme discomfort. And then they learn to, well, I say learned because you know, you learn things from your environment. What they've learned from this experience is that these therapists were causing them harm. And in the future, when there maybe is a treatment, maybe they won't actually go for it because they're too scared that a clinician is going to pretty much make them suffer for the sake of a dollar. So what I want to say is if you're a clinician and you're thinking of doing an unapproved treatment for misophonia, don't. Just don't. Do some research. Learn more. See what the disorder is. Really sift through the weeds, too, because reading some internet blog from some guy that says he has a treatment is not the same as actually going out, reading the literature reviews, looking at the studies, and realizing that we're not at a treatment yet. And that sucks. Sure, it does. I have misophonia. I want it gone. Everyone else with it wants it gone. If there was a treatment, I would be screaming from the damn rooftops because there's nothing I want more than to not be triggered to not be tortured by a lawnmower, to not be tortured every time I go near a loved one that's snoring or coughing, eating a little too loud while we watch a movie, and suddenly I'm just in a rage and I don't want to ever watch a movie again. I don't like that. I don't want it. I want a treatment. But what I don't want is for people to be taken advantage of. I'm sorry that I'm a little heated in this video because, honestly, there is absolutely no reason in my mind that I think these people should be doing this other than to say they helped maybe. Maybe they think they're doing a good thing, but if clients are not responding well over time, or maybe they just stop going back because, you know, it didn't help long term, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Just please stop. And if you are a person looking into therapists and they say, look, we're going to try exposure therapy, look them in the face and say, okay, where is the long-term clinical study that said that this actually worked and had results over time? 
If they point you to some random internet blog or some one-off study, walk out that door, don't look back. There are other clinicians and there are ones that will help you cope, have coping skills, have sensory-based training, deal with the other emotions around, deal with co-occurring disorders. Those are all real things. Go to an audiologist, get some ear generators, whatever, things that can help kind of cut the noise. But don't stick with the clinician that's just taking you for a ride. Because honestly, at this point, I I cannot say anything good about anyone that's using an unverified treatment that hasn't been shown to help. So I hope you have a good day and I hope you enjoyed my little rant because honestly, this makes me angry and I am sick of staying quiet. I'm sick of being polite because I am one of you. I have misophonia too. And <laughs> if a clinician looked at me and said, oh, look, let's do CBT. It'll work. It'll work. I- I'd be at that door so freaking fast. Like, yeah, I just, no, it wouldn't even happen because hopefully they know enough about me to know that that's just not going to fly.